What's up everybody, this is Steve Stralachi and today we are going to be building a preset with a new capture from the Quad Cortex 2.0 update. There's a bunch of new features that we're going to be going through. A lot of this update was quality of life and user interface based. So I'm going to try to cover as many of those as I can in this, uh, in this preset build. Again, a lot of this stuff, I mean, there's really only three channels of an amplifier that were added. So there's not much in terms of new tones to explore, but there's some new processes to explore and some new things to showcase. So what we're gonna cover today is installing IRs and using the new IR block that they installed. So there's a new IR loader. We're gonna show you how to get them from your computer into the cloud, cloud into the cortex, cortex into your signal chain, yada, yada, yada. I'm gonna be making a capture and putting it up for free of my new Matchless DC30. I just got this, I'm super excited to have it. It's a Samson era, so it's a very valuable and exciting amp for me to own. I'm just gonna be going through my Sur Reactive load into the Quad Cortex, and we're gonna be using the impulse responses that we upload together. So these IRs I just got for free from, I saw a post from Amal, Amalgam, I think it is the proper name, but on their website, if you put your email address in, they'll give you a bundle of IRs for free, and they happen to have the two IRs that they recommend you use with a match list. What are in my combo is like a V30 and a G12 25 watt speaker. So that mismatched speaker is recommended for the match list, so it's kind of fitting that we use those for this preset build. So first, let's take a look at how we get our IRs into the Quad Cortex. So first, obviously, go to Neural uh, Neural's website, and you're going to log into your um, log into your Cortex Cloud account. You're going to hit My Profile. You see, I got a bunch of stuff here. And then you have this little tab called Impulse Responses, and right here you have your Impulse Response Library, where you are going to be able to browse, or you could just drag and drop. I have this IR folder with this all IR cabs from, again, Amalgam is who, um, who I got these from. And then you will have this list of IRs at your disposal. So now to retrieve your IRs, you're gonna go to your directory, scroll, scroll down to Cloud IRs. You'll see now all of the stuff that you just dragged in is here. And you see this, I'm gonna be grabbing these two Marshall 68s. I'm gonna hit download and now they appear in my impulse response library so that I can now load the IR loader. And we can do this as a dual mono, a dual stereo, but let's say we're gonna do dual mono, select, choose IR file, choose IR file, and that is all there is to that. So now you have your two IRs put into your signal path. So now I have a preset that I wanna put my, my capture into. So I'm gonna save this. And now I'm gonna to go to a new neural capture. Now we're gonna follow these new instructions. So this is a totally new thing. Input, in, input one's gonna be the instrument, which is great, that's what we want. That's really so much better. And now headphones, I'm connected, great. Capture out is gonna now go to the front end of the amp. And then input two is gonna be what's coming from the reactive loads. And now I am at my capture. So let's see what kind of levels we're getting here. I'm just gonna hit auto set as recommended. And there's all different theories about how to do this. Um, I'm gonna try this and see how it goes. Let's hit start capture. And that should be making my capture. In the meantime, let's, um, see what you guys want in the next update. So what are you still missing from the quad cortex and what do you wanna see in future updates? Me personally, I wanna see a updated hybrid mode where it's an open format and you're able to have two of the floor switches at the same time. So almost like it is in the Helix or the Fractal where you can fully customize your floorboard with an empty, an empty canvas and you can also switch to a full eight scenes. That would be ideal for me, having eight scenes, and then you could just page over to a blank canvas of pedals and be able to put whatever you want there, whether it's one preset, one scene, and the rest stomp boxes, or any combination. That, I think, would really make this take it to the next level. I do think that having to stack the modes on top of one another is a little bit cumbersome, and also then you lose eight scenes. So it's like hybrid mode's great, but you can't fully use it. Um, 
it's a little bit frustrating to try to figure out and having to pick and choose your scenes. It's also global, so you can't change it in individual presets. So it's a little bit frustrating, a little bit confusing, but I think that hopefully in the next update, we get that open format where we can put anything we want anywhere we want. And also one more thing, when we are done with this, we should still be able to audition our captures in a signal path. I think that the way that the capture process is going is a little bit annoying when you're just doing a raw amp head capture. So right now I'm just capturing the matchless preamp and all when it says to test it, all we're going to hear is a can of buzzing bees because there's no cabinet attached. So I would love if you can set up a rig. It could be just a default rig where you have a cabinet to turn on and off depending on the capture that you're making. So if you're just capturing an amp head, you can put it in a signal chain that has a cabinet and maybe a little bit of a reverb or something that's gonna be more practical and applicable when you're auditioning to see if your capture came out good. Because right now, like I'm just capturing the preamp, it's not gonna sound good in either application. So that's definitely one thing I would like to have added in a future update. And obviously, desktop editor. I mean, having to do videos like this where I'm filming the screen, filming the touch screen, this is all great, but it's a little bit annoying when you have to continuously pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down. Like to make a capture, I have to pick it up, put all the wires in, put it down on the floor, be able to step on the audition button. And then I have to pick it up to rename it. And it's just, can we just have the desktop editor, please? And I think the other big thing for me is having a marketplace. I have a ton of great amps here that I would love to put up on a marketplace and um, put them up for sale and make some really great presets with them to share with the community. But I mean, I'll be a little bit patient on that, but the rest of the stuff I would love to see as soon as possible. Say SS Matchless 2.0 for the update. This is just an amp head preferred instrument is guitar. I'd love that you can put the new metadata in here so that when you're searching for stuff, you know what exactly you're getting. And now I'm gonna hit that check mark, go to the preset. I am now gonna take this and delete it. All right, you know, let's just bypass it for now. And here we're gonna go down to our neural capture, my captures. I would also like, while we're here, I would like a folder of stuff that I made, like in, like at my captures. Why can't my captures be captures that I made versus captures that I saved? So I think having that in the directory would be a huge benefit, where if you're somebody that makes a lot of captures, you have a section of captures that you physically made versus just all of the captures thrown in. Like my captures should be my captures, not downloaded captures, if that makes sense. So if we have a downloaded captures and a my captures folder, I think that would improve the directory very much. All right, so now I'm all plugged in, hooked up. I just had to take Audrey out for a walk and now we should be good to go. Let's hear what this capture sounds like in the signal chain. <laughs> really nice. I mean, it's pretty responsive, just like the amp. I'd say maybe a little touch harsh. So I'm just going to take this low pass here on the cab blocks and we're just going to dial some of this out. Say to probably around six ish. And the cool thing about the amp is usually you could clean up very well with the volume. Let's turn this down to about five. Even down to about three.
maybe still a touch bright. So if we go to here and we just maybe drop some of the treble here. <laughs> even there with the gain a little bit less might sound a little bit better. I don't know if the gain staging was a little bit different, but I like it with a little bit less hair. And now I can engage what I put up here. And here you can see the new blocks. This is uh, my vintage Nobles ODR-1 into the front end of the amp. These two combined sound really good. And now I'm going to save my edit. And now let's upload this to the cloud. Now, whoops. Now the cool thing is that we just have to press, we just have to tap it and we can hit the cloud button. And then right there, we have our upload. We get our loading screen, we get the check mark. And now check the app and we're gonna make that public. So let's do that now. If I go to my presets, I can now just click on here, make this public, and you'll see my bundled captures here with no notes on it. So I'm just going to hit edit. Call this match C30 and the tags. IRs are from Amalgam, free download on their website, so that you guys can do that, I'll put a link to it. And that does it for this video of using the new IR loader, using the new capturing system or capturing wiring. And um, yeah, let me know what you think of this preset. It's up on the cloud, go download it. My username is Stalach, and if you have any questions, ask them down below. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.